Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the toast and happy Monday. That truly feels like a Monday because my God, do we have a mountain to climb today? So much to do, so much to see. So what's wrong with Wait, I have to stop singing songs on the podcast. We'll get into that later in the week. Hey, Jax, how you turn? Hey, Lutter, Delu, doing good. As you stated, it's such a Monday. Yuck. But oh my God. it's exciting because there's so much percolating, so much to discuss. We have so much to do today. I think everyone is kind of looking to us, the number one sports podcast in the world, to be like, what is going to be said today? There's not much that can be said, you know? Like... It's, I mean, the, the, like most good things in life, today's episode is going to be layered because last night was layered. There was so much going on. Of course, there were two different games, two different teams headed to the Super Bowl, two teams' dreams were crushed. But then there's, of course, the Taylor and Travis element, which not only, like, were we fed, we feasted. Yeah. We, as a culture, we feasted. We were full on life last night. They gave us so much to talk about. They really did. And of course, it's our first story. And I feel like we should just wait for the stories to get into it because it's kind of like the only story. Like the other four. Who cares? Take them or leave them. Yeah. So we'll get into that and we'll do a really quick before the stories catch up. Yeah, this isn't going to be one of those days where it's 20 minutes till the first story. Like, I mean, well, first of all, not turned to loot. You never know. Like, you so can't true. say that until it's done. I know, but like I have one thing on my mind right now. You know? I know, I know, but let's just catch up quickly. How was your weekend? How was the stockyards? How was the rodeo? My weekend was amazing. I went to, and I kept last week calling it the Dallas Rodeo, and I realized like why that, you know, rubbed people the wrong way. It's not the Dallas Rodeo, it's the Fort Worth Rodeo. And you would think like the airport is called Dallas Fort Worth. They're literally the same. They could not be more different, these two towns. And I've been to Dallas many times, and it's like a mini New York. Obviously, it's southern, but it's not like crazy country like no it's, it's like a suburban it feels like long island it's urban like it's not it's not that crazy you know i spent the whole weekend in fort worth very different 30 minutes outside of dallas and i had such a blast it's so country like it's really texas you know and we went to the rodeo the fort worth rodeo and we just spent the whole weekend in fort worth like doing the things getting hats boots doing the things you're supposed to do i had such a blast i first of all love the rodeo and, you know, I was given, like, a little bit, like, special access. You know, I got to go behind the scenes and see the bulls Special and such. treatment. You got to meet the bulls. I did. And when I was with, you know, the rodeo peeps, at my, the, the question on everybody's lips, I kept saying, I was like, have you seen, seen the, the longest, longest ride? ride? Jackie, they have. <laughs> they have seen the longest ride. And is it an accurate representation of their profession? I actually do think so. And they like it? They like it. Do they like it as much as we like it? I mean, I don't know if they literally like remembered every detail of the film. They were like, oh, yeah, I think I've seen that movie. Like, it doesn't resonate with them in the way that it resonated with us. It's too much, you guys. If you haven't seen The Longest Ride, like, you absolutely have to. It's the best romance movie out there. It is the strangest movie. Do it you is. agree? Yeah, because it's all about, it's like, obviously, The Longest Ride, the bull riding. It's about the rodeo. The romance. But it also has a lot of Jewish history. Yes, uh, I remember when I first saw the movie, I was like, is this a romantic comedy or a Holocaust movie? Like, it's it kind of so a Holocaust movie. You, I know it sounds crazy. That's why you, you have to watch it. You can't describe it. You can't put it into words. But that's why it's so good, I think, because it has so much depth. No, and I heard all weekend about, you know, the amazing Jewish community in Fort Worth. You know, we got a real nice synagogue around here. Like, I kind of am obsessed with Fort Worth. I went to the stockyards. I really, I honestly, it was one of those trips where I feel like I didn't get enough time Absorbing the culture. You left wanting more. Oh, and it's really worth noting, I don't believe there is a town more populated with toasters than Fort Worth, Texas. I, I, you know, I love to travel this great nation and I love to measure, you know, the toaster per capita ratio. I have never in my life met more toasters than I did at Fort Worth. And I'm waiting, I need to go visit some more towns because I don't know if there's a town more populated. But maybe it was just like the rodeo is very no. toasty. No, 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 no. They weren't there for the rodeo? Like, everyone in Fort Worth goes to the rodeo, but they weren't from out of town. They weren't. No, it was very much like a local affair. Got it, got it. And it was amazing. Like, I just had the best time. I'm so excited to be back. And, you know, man plan God locked. Oh, yeah, with her big flight that came home that she made How many to watch times football. last week did I say, I got on an earlier flight because I love the bus, yada, yada, yada. So I got on the earlier flight. We're starting our initial descent into LaGuardia Airport. 
And the guy's like, uh, actually, never mind. Our landing gear is like not fit for icy conditions. So we have to go to the nearest airport where there's no ice. That's Raleigh. Now, I just want to say like this new trend where airlines are like, you know, putting people on planes that aren't fit to fly. You know, we know about the Alaska door. I'm calling out. Yeah, Delta, you put me. Who the fuck flies Claudia, to New York in the Boeing. middle of Who the fuck flies to New York in the middle of January without proper landing gear? Like, it's really dangerous. And I didn't feel unsafe because we had the proper landing gear. Like, we could have landed in Florida. Like, whatever. But, like, what the fuck? And it's like, we are literally go. But people are putting themselves into debt just to get on a flight these days. Like, it's so expensive. And we're literally being put in danger? I, I don't know about this life. No, we need to talk about the airlines. Because if yeah. we don't, who will? It's unacceptable, I want to say. Like, the, the door should The Alaska Airlines door. The, the door should, stay should be bolted. Then there was the other flight where some dude was sitting in the exit row and, like, looked out the window. And it looked like the wing was, like, fly, like, like falling off. So he said, oh, excuse me, Mr. Flight Attendant. I feel like the wing is maybe, like, not secure. Turns out he was right. They didn't take off. Like, what is going on? What is going on at Boeing? And then did you see the CEO? He like went to Congress to answer for his sins. And he was like, we would not put a plane in the air. But you that did. we didn't. Bro, your door fell off. Yeah. What about the door? And it's so, like, we've been fly, flying airplanes isn't like new technology. It, no, it's, no. But it's like they were doing it better decades ago than they are now. Like what's changed? We need a full investigation. And I agree. It's more expensive than ever. And we used to complain like, the price goes up, the quality goes down, your sardines. It's so, yep. such like a torturous, unpleasant, now it's unluxurious experience. But like, you arrived. So yeah, I was like beyond annoyed that I then had to reroute an hour, sit on the tarmac for an hour while they like fixed whatever it was, and then fly back an hour. It was a three hour like delay. And of course I was annoyed about that, but I was also like concerned about the safety of me and my fellow passengers. Right. And it was, and then I, so thank you. God. Oh, and of course, this is just the way the world works. I'm like, all right, I'll miss the first game. I'll miss the Chiefs game. But I really was like more concerned with the Niners game. And I'll just watch it on the plane. Of course, my flight didn't have direct TV. Like some Delta flights have access to live TV and some don't. Of course, mine didn't. And it just feels like back in the day, they all had live TV. They did. And now we have less live TV, but we're supposed to be advancing as a, as a people. No, we have less live TV. But like we have serious XM audio. Like who fucking cares? Yeah. So thank God for YouTube TV. I was able to watch, and I have to give you know credit where credit is due. The Wi-Fi was streamable and it was free, so it was excellent Wi-Fi. I didn't have any problems. I was able to watch the whole game. But like, what the fuck? Like giving third world. Yeah. Like my God, whatever. So I got home just in time for the Niners game. But like me and my big plans, and if I had stuck with the original flight, I would have gotten home an hour earlier. Right, but you at least you made it home same day for the Niners game, which was the game that was more important to you until. We saw what we saw. By the way, don't you feel like, okay, so all the girlies who were tuning in for football last night, like everybody was watching for Taylor and Travis. And of course we tuned in and we were excited about that too. But like, I was really excited for the 49ers game and it's cause I'm not like other girls, you know, like all these other girls who are tuning in just for Taylor. Like I tune in for Taylor, but also for the love of the sport. Wow. She's one of those, yeah. she's crossed over to the dark side. And I love to drink beer. The way that I felt watching the game yesterday and I was watching with um, some other people, I felt like I know everything. Yeah. There's nothing. And I know you guys like to say like, we don't, we don't know I knew more than anyone else I was I mean, the go-to source for information did you see that touchback in the Chiefs game no I didn't oh well I, I barely like, kind was of watching I was you know like eating and with the kids and stuff but like it as in as far as like the dynamics at play and like oh, I know as everything. far as the dynamics yeah I know everything well there was a touchback um, called in the Chiefs game, which I kind of brought to light last week. Right. As this really dumb controversial rule and everyone was messaging me like, oh my God, I know what a touchback is because of the toes. So like, it's just, people say we don't do important work here and those people are dumb and ugly. Yeah. So let's get into the stories because- Wait, before we do. Oh. It's also worth noting that we did a big merch shop on Friday and I'm so happy everyone got their merch. I wanted to say the shop is still open. So we're gonna be accepting orders for a little bit longer. There's two sets available. They're very sporty, very athletic. One is gray, one is navy. I am wearing a size medium. Jackie wears a medium slash large. Um, and it's just a fabulous merch shop that you can get at shoptoastmerch.com. It's kind of our biggest merch shop to date. I'm so excited that everybody's loving like the athletic vibes we're doing. Yeah. And I, you just love to see it. You really do. Get your threads, shoptoastmerch.com. Now. Now, without further ado, it's time. It is time for the it best is, five is. stories that you need to know, but really just the one. 
And the fast five stories that you need to know, but really just the one, are brought to you by the new Lionsgate movie, Scrambled, which is a heartfelt yet hilarious journey of self-discovery and self-love. It was written, directed, and stars... Leah McKendrick, who is, quote, among IndieWire's top female filmmakers to watch this year. I was watching the uh, trailer last week, like not literally getting teared up. Talk about a movie that's talking about, it's a real movie that feels like a movie that's talking about like a real issue for women. Like it's a real thing women go through. I feel like it's a really relatable story. So quintessential eternal bridesmaid Nellie Robinson, who's played by Leah McKendrick, is constantly finding herself between weddings, baby showers, bad dates. So when she begins to feel like the clock is ticking, she is faced with the bleak romantic prospects. Nellie decides to freeze her eggs, setting her on an empowering journey to a brave new world where she ultimately discovers the one she's looking for might just be herself. So Film Threat is calling it a brilliant storytelling film. And you can learn more about it at lionsgate.com slash movie slash scrambled. Watch the trailer. The music was making me cry. And it's just like she's so much of the movie, the trailer's like her and her brother, like her brother is older than her. No one's like bothering him about having kids. He's literally gonna have kids when he's 70. And she just like finds herself in this moment where she's like, oh my God, like if I don't have kids or if I don't do something, like I might not be able to. So it's a very relatable story. It's in theaters February 2nd. It is rated R. So again, the movie's called Scrambled. It's a Lionsgate film and it is in theaters February 2nd rated R. Today's episode is also brought to you by Caden Lane and their new Color Me pajama sets, which are the kids these days' latest obsessions. So Caden Lane was started in 2005 by a single mom who wanted to create better and cuter clothes, accessory, and keepsakes for her own children. And Caden Lane is on a mission to make mom's lives easier. They show That shows up in their Color Me pajamas that help make bedtime fun and enjoyable, or hiding extra zips and snaps in outfits to make it easier for moms to get their little ones dressed. You see the brands that go viral, you wonder if they're worth the hype. Well, Caden Lane is absolutely worth the hype. They have over 70,000 five-star reviews and millions of customers for a reason. If I may, please. Caden Lane is the best pajama kids clothe baby brand. It's all I buy every time Charlie hits a new age. Like I go to Caden Lane and I rebuy all the ones I had at the other size because I love them so much. They have the cutest prints, but they're also just the softest. And you want to be putting your baby in the softest things. For Charlie, it's what he wears every single day is, you know, footy pajamas. But for Harry, those are the pajamas he wears to sleep at night. And I still want them to be super soft. Of course. So much so that Caden Lane is a new sponsor on the toast, which is so exciting. But they wanted to gift us stuff. And I literally own everything mm -hmm. from their website already. So I got some like accessories, which Harry also loves silicone, silicone toys of like silicone? pots, <laughs> pots and pans and forks and like eating utensils oh, and stuff because that's the only thing I didn't already own from their site. Also, it makes for the best gift because they will personalize anything. Just I literally owned everything from the site already for the from the last two years that I had to find something I didn't already own. Caden Lane. Also, I'm sure you've seen the meme. If I could tell new moms one tip, it's. Mm -hmm zippered pajamas zippered pajamas don't bother with the buttons don't bother with anything else zippered pajamas and Caden Lane has the zipper that starts from the top and also the zipper that starts from the bottom for those just diaper changes in the middle of the night you don't need Kate anything Lane. else Caden Lane is your one-stop shop for all your newborn, infant, and toddler apparel. Head to cadenlane.com slash toast and use code toast for 20% off your be. order. I will be. Once again, that's Caden, C-A-D-E-N-L-A-N-E.com backslash toast for 20% off and make sure to use promo code toast so they know that we sent you. I will be using that code. Thank you, La Tour de Lou. You welks. Our first story, last night. Yeah. Last night, we let the football talk. So let's just like go in chronological order, you know? Okay, that seems like a good plan. It's three o'clock, we're in Baltimore. The Ravens, led by Lamar Jackson, are taking on the Kansas City Chiefs, led by, of course, Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. And everyone's talking about this game for a multitude of reasons. One, I think people were like, is Taylor gonna go? Of course she's gonna go. I never even crossed my mind to say, is Taylor going to storm the field? Because of course she would never do that. Like, it's What's so, so funny is while we were watching the game, Zach was like, do you think Taylor's going to go on the field? And I was like, no, she can't. Like, it's a secure, like, no. What are you, never. What are you saying? Do you, are you even paying attention? Yuck. And then when I saw it on my phone, I was the first one to see it. I was like, she went on the field. Okay, so the game itself was really, it was heartbreaking because this is my first time ever watching a Baltimore Ravens game. We've been talking a lot about Lamar Jackson. He's like this wonder kid, yada, yada, $80 million. I've never seen it in action. Let me tell you, he's very talented. Extremely talented. The team is very good. They have great defense. It was a, it was a tough loss. It wasn't like it was this big, you know, blowout. Loserville. It was anyone's game up until the end. And I felt, I felt for the people of Baltimore, I did because... I don't know, maybe it was just like, I really like their color. That that violet was nice. Like I just, I was, I was kind of rooting for them a little bit. I was like, go off, Lamar. That's how I felt about the debt too. I like their color and I felt bad for their fans. Okay, so <clears throat> I have like a, 
a hot take when we get to debt, but I'll get there in a minute. Because the debt fans are giving Barbie movie fans. They just... They're being really sensitive and they're like, like seriously, you guys celebrating? Like, do you know what we've been through? It's like, relax, it's football. No, for real. I kept having this realization and it's like, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so into sports, you guys. Like, I'm here. This is a sports podcast. Like, we're changing our whole business. We love sports. I want to watch love. it all the time. I can't get enough. But then I like have this moment where I'm like, this Take is a back. game. No, the debt fans are this being really crazy. This is a really game. Crazy. Like, like, we play this in our backyard and like the amount of hoopla for a game and people the way they talk about it it's you have to just just, like just immerse yourself and not think about that but they literally act as if it's like a war like no no and like people were messaging me being like i won't be able to tune in and like dead serious by the way i won't be able to tune into the toast tomorrow like it's so heartbreaking and i know the story of the debt like and i and what they accomplished is amazing like and what i was saying to ben last night because ben was like oh my god this really sucks um and it does but you don't just like one year get really good and win the Super Bowl. Like it takes time. And so they've never even made it this far. And so their time is coming. It's, it is not their time, but the debt's time is coming. It doesn't just happen in one year, like this magical thing. What they did is amazing. It's historic. They will get to the Super Bowl in the next few years. Like this is the start. Do you know how many years, like the last couple of years, the 49ers lost in the NFC championships, lost the Super Bowl? Like it takes time. You build and you build and you build and you will get there. The debt fans, absolutely have to calm down like you will get there it will happen for you yeah back to chronological and if, order. And, it, and if you can't make peace with that just remember it's a game and like we're yeah. just having fun it's and so we're getting fun. we're getting overplayed paid to play a sport that you play as children like it's so fun it's fun so back to Baltimore. It was a really tough loss, but of course, you know, and I did say here on this show that the NFL, of course, has a vested interest in getting the Chiefs to the Super Bowl. And I did, you know, kind of share that conspiracy theory about the ref who's notoriously lenient on the away team. And I watched the game and I felt like it was fair. I have no I have no qualms about the NFL being scripted. A lot of people are like, the NFL is scripted. Of course, the Chiefs wanted to. But I watched the game and they won fair and square. Also, the Chiefs have been in four of the last five Super Bowls. Like, maybe they're yeah. just good right now. Maybe yeah. Patrick and Travis and the boys, like, are the best out there. Yeah, no, like, things are, you know, popular for a reason. Like, they are good. Yeah, they're kind of how the Patriots were. You wouldn't say, like, it was a conspiracy to get the Patriots to the Super Bowl every time they went. I, I think people would have said that, by the way, like, back in the day. Like, they were saying that. Really? It was just Tom Brady. Yeah, no, it was, it, it's just Patrick Mahomes. And by the way, four out of five Super Bowls, he's won four out of five Super Bowls, and the one that he lost was to Tom Brady. There you go. So it was fabulous. The game was great. And then Taylor took to the field. And absolutely no one was expecting that, well, at least of all me. And we just got so much footage we get and you know what we get a lot from them comparative to her other relationships like I feel like every we time we get a lot from them comparative to any celebrity relationship because she goes once a week and sees yeah. him and then and we also she's get so generous in the rest of the week we get a lot she's so generous so I feel every time they step out together I'm shocked by what they give us and last night was absolutely no exception the amount that we were given was it was historic it was baffling it was historic. I feel like over the last, I know it's been 12 games because the Super Bowl will be the 13th game she attends. Yep. I feel like she's become really comfortable in the football yep. environment. I think she really likes most of the fans and the way that the whole stadium treats her and the whole organization that like by the time she went onto the field last night, like it's a comfortable environment for her filled with other huge stars and huge moments that she doesn't feel so out of place. I completely agree. I think like the league and the coach and especially like the Kansas City franchise has been very welcoming to her. Now, of course, there's like the moronic, idiotic fans who like burn pictures of her at tailgates. I don't think that stuff really gets to her. I think I, I agree with you. Like the league at a very high level and the team at a very high level, like take care of her and make her feel like family. Like there's that picture going viral of Andy Reid, like pointing at her. He's on stage accepting yep. the AFC champion and he's pointing at Taylor. I think she feels like it's a real family. I think she feels safe. And I think a lot of that has to do with Travis making her feel really comfortable in who she is. Like. I mean, I hate to always bring up the song Peace, but I think up until this point, the song Peace is a perfect example of how Taylor felt about her fame, but also how it would affect like her happiness romantically. And if you re- if you listen to the lyrics, it's like kind of devastating. It's like a person coming to grips with the fact that like she'll never really be, you know, in a relationship that's comfortable and that's normal and that 
is able to make do with her level of fame. And here in comes this just like big dope Travis who loves every minute of it, who I think has taken away like every shred of insecurity she had about like her being this sort of like elephant in a room. Cause he's an elephant. Cause he's, I mean, he's an elephant and he's larger than life and no one's really bigger than her, but in so many ways he is. And I, it's, I saw that meme that was like Taylor singing peace and Travis just comes in and he's like, he dog, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> No, and you know like, what it is? He doesn't it's, have these internal conflicts that she's worried no, about for so He's so, so long. neurotypical. He's neurotypical, he's confident, and he's having fun. And these things should be fun. Remember, yep. we're playing a game. No, at the end of the day, what it boils down to is like up until Taylor met Travis, like everything was just so serious. And Travis is this deeply unserious person. And I think it took like this kind of like silly, goofy, you know, man to like make Taylor realize, like, wait. Not everything is so dire. I'm literally like the most famous, beautiful woman talented in the world. Like I could do whatever the fuck I want. And she just, you know, what if I just went on the field? What if I just had some fun? What if I did what I want? And yeah, what if I went on the field and now her having gone on the field, it's like, of course she should have done that. Of course, and look how much fun she had. Like, and she would have, that would have like, would have been a moment she robbed herself of because she was like, so, you know, nervous about what people would say or wanting to protect this like deeply you know being deep like deeply protective over something she would have missed out and as much as she has like security concerns about going down to the field if you actually think about it the field is another safe place yep. filled with only players and their families the same people she's been around yep. for the last few months like the only difference is there's even more cameras but she's kind of shirked that yep concern and it's and i think she said it or people are speculating she said in the video like i don't give a fuck about all he the cameras said it. So no, he, he said like he clocked a camera yes. and was like act, like not going to be super PDA. And then she said, I don't give a fuck and kissed And by him. the way, the lip readers are working overtime because these two, and I, I don't know why it's shocking, but they said like, love you. Yeah, they did. Well, good. Like, m multiple times. Good. No, a, a serious relationship that started over the summer and now it's February. Like they should be in love. This is on track for they, their in the eventual words, marriage. In the words of Liz P. Woods, these two shall wed. Yeah, I don't see how they don't. But then what gets me every time, and I was watching the footage, like just guffawing over mm -hmm. the whole thing. But what had me actually chuckling was his speech. Yeah. You got to fight for your <laughs> right to party. We're going to Las Vegas, Nevada. And I'm like, how is this her boyfriend? <laughs> I know. Like, this is the woman who wrote, family that I chose now that I see your brother as my brother because there's robbers to the, like the literal poet of our generation like you could open any Taylor Swift song even the most like corny pop one and find the most like literally Walt Whitman level reference but do you think it's more profound than you've got to fight for your right to party no he kind of did fight for his right to party in the game he fought yep. hard and now he has the right to party and I'm sorry, like anybody Facts. who's ever read any sort of romance novel having to do with athletes, like, and I'm currently reading one about a hockey player. So like, I'm just kind of envisioning like her being so tiny under his like big shoulder. I know he was wearing padding, but like still his like elbows are bloody. Like literally he's covered in dirt and blood and her just being like so tiny with her red lipstick. Like you couldn't, Colleen Hoover could never, like no. you couldn't write a book this romantic. No, you really couldn't. And what's crazy is she's not even, she's tall. She's six foot. Yeah, so he's just that large. It is a dream. No, it seriously was so cute, but the the speech was cracking me up. It, no, and like that's just I think the spe the speech. You're right, is sort of emblematic of what's going on here. Such a deeply unserious, positive, happy, goofy person with someone who I feel like, especially like pandemic and then folklore evermore and then the breakup with Joe for a few years was quite morose. No, and I think feel like she surrounds herself with like artistic, even not her yep. boyfriends, like Jack Antonoff, like artistic. Yep. Energy. Dark, thoughtful, serious people. Yep. But not no, everything has to be that way all the time. I completely agree. It was too much to bear. Like... <laughs> And I imagine if you're like one of these people who's like, oh, Taylor Swift ruined the NFL. Like last night was probably like horrible for you because it's all anyone's talking about. Yeah, no, I forgot. Like we also got our Super Bowl teams. Who cares? Who cares? Actually, Who cares? I care because the 49ers and we'll get there afterwards. But like it was like I could seriously, I could do a five hour podcast on this. Like no, on just thing, all the videos. As much as there's so much to say, like I have no words, you know, there's no yeah. hot take. Yep. 
it's more so just like processing our feelings. Yeah. Speaking about the cultural significance, what we maybe think happened behind the scenes and, and, and just treasuring it. Behind the scenes, we know that Kylie and Jason were there again. I saw a bunch of pictures of them in the suite. So I feel like they're getting along. Oh, yeah. And they're not best friends. They're not best friends. They should. I don't think they need to be or that they even should be because that's just too much. Yep. Agreed. Taylor brought Kelly Teller and Cara Delevingne. And it's so funny how Kelly Teller has become like a Kansas City Chiefs like girly at every game when her husband is the biggest Eagles fan. Probably like a bigger Eagles fan doesn't exist. But I actually don't think it's that much of a conflict because now Kelly's hanging out with Jason, who's the oh, yeah. Eagle. It's not a conflict. But I and wonder I, why I he wasn't like there. Chiefs fans can also be Eagles fans if you're Kelsey fans. That's true. Unless they're in the Super Bowl against one another. Right, the Kelsey Bowl. So, um, wait, there was one more thing I wanted to say. She was wearing the bracelet. Everyone's quaking TNT. Oh, yeah, she wore a diamond tennis bracelet that's, like, made to look like a cheap friendship bracelet, but it's actually made of diamonds because friendship bracelets is just, like, how this whole thing started with her and Travis, and it says TNT, which people are saying stands for Taylor and Travis, but N starts with an A. No, I so, don't think that N is for N because, like... You don't. no. Not only would Taylor never, like most people would never, especially when you're setting it in diamonds, like right. N. It's not M and M. I don't do know. Me neither. Ma does he have a like a puppy or something? Oh, the other thing I wanted to say was another video that's going viral is Taylor leaving the stadium with everyone, Brittany Mahomes, all the Kelseys, and there's like fans outside, and there's literally like a fucking wench, like a literally being like, Taylor, a woman, you ruined football. Like screaming at a Taylor. And Taylor definitely hears and she goes like this. I love you so much. <laughs> love you all. Wait, but that's Thank also you. because everybody else who's waiting there like does love Taylor. So why would she Duh. Sh why would she respond to the one wench? No, but like, is that wench for real? Like that's that's giving like I care about football. I'm not, not focusing on the wench. I love that. I will I refuse. And I think in general football has brought so many couples together, fathers and daughters, Taylor yep. like it's all good. It's all and good. And I was watching the game out of my periphery yesterday, and I didn't see Taylor once. And then the boys were saying, like, no, they showed her a few times, but not incessantly because I didn't see her once. It was not incessant. It was pretty much any time Travis did something big, like a touchdown or a big catch, they panned to the person's friends and family. Like, why is that a big deal? That should be classic. I want to see what the it friends is. and family have to say. Oh, and I feel bad that, like, this whole recap – you know, we really haven't mentioned Lamar Jackson because he did such a good job. And this was like my first intro to Lamar Jackson. And he um, is also going viral for throwing a, you know, a ball like he does as the quarterback. And it got tipped off by someone. So it like flew the other way and he caught it. So he he caught the ball that he threw. Did you see that? I heard about it. It was me and Ben were like, we were sh like, that was next level. Like, and that's, he's a deeply talented person. And I felt bad because, you know, he was playing really well. And the team was playing well. Like, I have no notes for them, you know? Yeah. The thing is, I feel like the Chiefs and the Ravens were, like, better than all the other conference teams. But they have to yeah. play each other here. Because the boys last night were saying that the other conference, the 49ers conference, like, doesn't have a great team. Well, they have the Eagles and the Niners. So that's not well, true. Well, the Eagles didn't go far. So how great. But, but they were, like... They were supposed to. And the Niners played amazing. And Brock, everybody owes Brock an apology. But they have this, like, fatal flaw in the fact that they don't have a franchise quarterback. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into the second game now. Because it was so fabulous. And it was a true roller coaster. This Nail was biter. Was, they were down by 17 points at the half. They could not get arrested. Like, not only could they not score any points, they couldn't stop the other team from scoring points. Like, it was just bad. It was 21-7, I think that was the score. Or maybe 24-7. And... Not to make everything about me, but like I never really. Why do you lost. call me like feeling embarrassed? I literally <laughs> put on my Instagram story. I said, "I'm not worried. Like I, I know that like something's going to happen in the locker room. They 49ers have that sort of like, you know, Dylan Panthers energy where like it's like team camaraderie. Yeah, they're all really friends and family. A lot of them have been on the team for many, many years. They're going to get in that locker room, and that Kyle Shanahan is going to give give a speech. You think it was Kyle Shanahan? I don't know who it was, actually. I don't know who gives the speeches. I feel like, like a pastor on the payroll. No, I feel like it's a teammate. It's not always who you think of. Oh. Like, not Brock. I think it might have been like Kyle Juszczyk because I think that's his role within the team, really, is like he... Eternal. Yeah, and I, I feel like he's a great friend to everyone. Like, everyone really respects him. That's why I've like... 
that's the vibe I get from I like that to Zach's shows like he's a a fixture in the team kind of like a Jason Kelsey yep I know I love that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And I just knew they were going to pull it out. And I literally put it on my Instagram. People are freaking out about it. Like, I'm freaking out too. But it was just like, people are freaking out. Because at the half, I was like, do not worry. They're going to get a motivational speech. And the 49ers will win by three. They literally won by three. That's like a kind of a crazy call, no? Yeah, no, pretty crazy. And now people are obviously like saying that I am like involved with the NFL in scripting the season, which is just another libelous claim about me. Yeah, because if you were, you wouldn't have put it out there. And you would have just like placed bets quietly. Right. Although, you know, last night did sort of negate the entire Super Bowl, Super Bowl logo conspiracy theory. Well, yeah, I feel like we were on to them. So they stopped, you know? Yeah, no, by the way, for sure. Once you catch but, on. But would they have been so obvious, the NFL, like by putting the actual teams in the logo? No, I don't think the NFL is scripted. But I do think with Taylor, they have huge financial incentive to get the Chiefs to the Super Bowl. But they didn't really even have to do anything because the right. Chiefs got themselves there. Maybe they, they chose a favorable ref, but still, if they were stinking, they couldn't yeah. get to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and I do think, though, that like it's just getting them there. I don't think they need to win. Like I don't think I agree. it'll be scripted. I agree, because even if she got on the field and that would be a major moment, like the views are in, the show is over. So back to the 49ers game um, and the debt. If I was the debt, like the debt is really mad at us. Like, of course, like, cause we won. And if I was the debt, I know we like love our coach cause he's just this like amazing guy with this amazing story. But like, I feel as like a football analyst, the debt loss due to poor coaching. Cause there were two times on fourth down when they should have went for the kick, gotten three points and kept the lead up. They went for it on both fourth downs to try and like get another first down. And they lost both times. They did not get a first down either time. That's two field goal attempts that you, like that's poor coaching. Like I know it's, you want to go for it, but you also have to be conservative and also like play the numbers. And I felt like that was a big mistake. So, so they made you those two field goals they would have won? Well, if they made either of them, it would have just been a different score. And it would have been like a one possession game versus a two possession game. Like, you know how that works out like the last two minutes with the three touchdowns. Like, no, literally, I don't know. It was just, I think it was bad coaching. And I know everyone's going to come for my neck, but like, sorry, we love this guy, Dan, but I think he made a mistake twice. Okay, you can make a mistake without being a bad coach. I think, I, it, no, I didn't say it was bad coach. I said it was bad coaching. Like okay, it was bad calls also, being made. You said in the beginning, like you started kind of like a referendum on him. No. I know I they love their coach, but. All, yeah, no, all, these two things can be true. You love your coach, but like you can be, I, like I, if I was a debt fan, I would blame the loss on the coaching. Who coaches the coach? Ain't it good to be the couch? <laughs> you know, like if the coach needs to train and become a better coach. No, I don't think like you, if you get to be that level, like you don't need to be trained. You could always improve. Like the debt is like licking their wounds and as they should, like it sucks. I totally get it. But like, don't be mad at us for winning. Like I think you had a very good, you were up by 20 points at one point. Like, you had a very good chance at winning. I think, like, your coach kind of, for lack of a better phrase, you know, fumbled the ball. I think you just underestimated the 49ers. No, I don't think anybody underestimated the 49ers. When I was watching the pregame with, like, Gronk and Terry Bradshaw, everyone was, like, Michael Strahan saying who they thought were. Everyone said the Niners. Like, they are just factually a better right, team. I underestimated them in the sense that you thought that you could win. Yeah. But I think you should go into every game thinking you're going to win, you know? Yeah, but you thought that, like, you were going to win. I guess for a while you were winning. And, you know, Jared Goff was excellent. A lot of his, you know, receivers, I feel like that's maybe not the right word. Like, it wasn't Jared. Like, Jared was throwing the ball to the people. The people were not catching it. There was, like, a thousand fumbles. Also, we need to talk about Brock. Yeah. Everyone owes Brock an apology. Not us, because we've been supporting him all week and saying he deserves a little bonus. Mm -hmm. And saying that he's doing his best and his best is good enough. Right, and you know him going to the Super Bowl playing against Patrick Mahomes who was a five hundred million dollar contract when he's getting paid eight hundred thousand. He's gonna drop the ball. <laughs> yeah, it's really crazy. Now, as a matchup, I like I I'm root and people are like Claudia, who are you gonna root for? You love Taylor, but you're like I'm a 49ers fan. Like I am rooting for the 49ers, but you know it's not gonna be bad if if the other team wins. Like I won't be devastated. However, like I need to you know, talk to Niner Nation, like, how do we win for real? Like, how does Brock beat Patrick Mahomes? Like, for real? He preys on it. 
He preys on it. I love that. I'm rooting for the 49ers because I wanted the Chiefs in the Super Bowl so we can have this moment. Taylor running back from Tokyo. She, by the way, is going to the Super Bowl. She can make it. She has ample time. I thought she landed 5 p.m. on the day of the Super Bowl. No, she lands 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Saturday. The day before. She has 24 hours. She gets spa treatments. It's Vegas. She could have go out to dinner. Yeah. She has more than enough time. There's no reason why she shouldn't be there. She will be there. Like, it's not even a question. Right. So I just, like the NFL, I just needed Taylor at the Super Bowl. I don't need them to win. Same, same. No, no I want to be would a good, get fair, more clean field game. content, maybe an on-field proposal. Like, Travis actually would do something like that. Honestly, like, <laughs> uh, if, okay. He wouldn't, but actually, would. you, know, you can't, you know, the thing is, you can't predict these two. Like, they have become so, almost like, in a good way, and I'm not meaning this negative, like, chuggy and millennial and public, like, I, what if he just got down on one knee? And it would just be giving, like, Romeo, save me. Like, I can't. It's too much. He, it's not out of the realm of possibility that he would just do that. You can't put Travis in a box. You can't, like, even Taylor, like, the most powerful woman in the world, like, he's so unpredictable. Yeah, like he could get up on holding the Lombardi trophy and be like, Taylor, he might even make a speech and, and talk about her. Oh my God, that I would like better. And he could also just, maybe he didn't even have it planned. He could just be like, will you marry me? And gives her his Super Bowl ring off his finger. Yeah, he's just like overcome. Overcome, you can't predict this man. So when you say it like that, I kind of need them to win. But barring that wouldn't happen, and it's just, we want her at the Super Bowl. We want to see all that. I would want the 49ers to win. It is their time. They so deserve it. It is their time. That's what's most important, like, here. It's their time. But it is, it's not going to be an easy game, you know? This matchup, like, I think, as, I, I couldn't even say who's a better team. Like, you kind of have to hope that, like, the Chiefs have an off game. Or not even the Chiefs, because I think the Chiefs are pretty evenly matched. The quarterbacks are not. But the Chiefs lost a lot of games this season. Remember there was a time where like them being out of in yes. the Super Bowl was out of the question? Yes, but it's like they got their shit together just in the nick of time. Whereas like the, the like them and the Eagles kind of had opposite experiences. Like the Chiefs were like stinging it up during the regular season and the Eagles were like on track to just being number one. And then they just sort of kind of had this sort of, you know, perpendicular journey. And it's like, I feel like football is all about like when you get your shit together as a team. It's a short season, you know? Or I feel like sometimes it's just not luck, but like the vibes, like... The vibes, the vibes could be off. And so the energy. I feel like for the Niners, they have to play their best and also hope that the vibes are a little off for the Chiefs. Yeah. Yeah. I know Brock is just, Brock is very, you know, hit or miss. I'm going to be honest. Like the first half was miss. Second half, he was like, fuck this. And he hit, you know, he had the power of Christ with him. It compelled him. That happens in the Super Bowl though too. He could have a bad first half. The Super Bowl is a religious experience as well. And I think what last night's game taught us is that like, it's never over. No. Just when you think it is, it's not. Yeah, that was like that Super Bowl with the Falcons and the Patriots. Do you remember that I one? I remember. I forget what year it was. They were winning, like the Patriots were lost. And yeah. then they just won. No, and that's what's so fun about football. And like, I always love the Super Bowl because I love the commercials. I love the food. I love the vibes. I love like the memes and the Super Bowl performer. But this year, I think might be like my favorite Super Bowl yet. Yeah, and we're going to be together. And we're going to be together. We're going to be eating so much food. Like, I think I'm going to have to get, like, wasted. Like, I'm going to be like a Brad. Like, I think I need to, like, start. Like, Should we play beer pong? Like, I think we need to have, like, a full-blown house party. Done. Like a frat energy. Great. Yeah, we could use the backyard. Maybe, like, Yeah. The oh, my pool. God, I forgot. Like, you have a house. Yeah, I have the outdoor TV. I just got my outdoor furniture. Oh my God, outdoor TV. Like, should we have like an outdoor? And it's not even that like hot in Florida right now. No, we're having cold front right now. Like, that's the vibe. Yeah. Put the hot tub on, like literally like a frat party. Hot tub. I haven't been in my hot tub. Let's do it. Okay. You'll have to figure out how to work it. I'm so excited. Like, this is just, like, not me being like a real girl who loves football. So sad that there's not football on this week. It's the Pro Bowl, but like, who cares? But what's crazy is that Travis Kelsey is going to do a podcast this week. He's going to do a podcast this week. Oh, and then, of course, in the bye week, you know, the week before the Super Bowl, it's the Grammys. Taylor Swift has been confirmed to be attending. Of course, she's nominated for Album of the Year. A lot of people were like, well, if he loses, he'll be able to go with her. I think if he wants to go with her, like like you said, Andy Reid, they love her. I do think they'll give him one day off. And, like, they need a break. You need to rest. Because of the Super Bowl, I don't think he'll go. But, wait, let me tell you, the Super Bowl is in Las Vegas. Him going to L.A., 
So they're training in it's Las Vegas way. this week? When did they? No, the team I don't goes- know when you go, but you definitely go early. You have to do press. There's a lot of stuff. Like, wait, also, can we talk about how every commercial on football is Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey? I imagine this year Travis Kelsey made more in brand deals than he did from his Super Bowl contract. I was curious about the commercials, too. I feel like every commercial is COVID, Paxlovid, and the Pfizer. Now, Jackie, literally... Experience. Well, he's Travis uh, Kelsey. State Farm. State Farm. Travis Kelsey. Subway. Travis Kelsey. There was two more. I was shocked. And a lot of them have been on the whole season. I'm sure he got them at the beginning before he started dating Taylor. But I'm sure he booked some more commercials. And I feel like also when you're watching a Chiefs game. Oh, Pfizer. Play. He's Pfizer. Four. Yeah, Mr. Pfizer. Yeah, like I so like many when commercials. You watch a Chiefs game, they play the commercials with the Chiefs players. Mm, that's a good call. It maybe. would be smartening. Smart marketing. Smart it marketing. It it's synergy. And then maybe for the Niners debt game, they don't really have commercial guys, so they just No, I feel like George Kittle is, is commercial. Oh, Christian McCaffrey? He's in commercials. No, not saying that they aren't, they shouldn't be, but are they in commercials? Maybe Christian this, McCaffrey. I feel like he is. This is also his first Super Bowl. Christians? Yeah. Muscle. And like, you know, the Olivia Copo of it all, the Chris, do you think Christian Juszczyk will make an outfit for Brittany Mahomes or Taylor Swift, even though they're like competitors? I do. Yes, because I think it's like the women's, I think it's a good message. It reminds everyone like this is a game. We're having fun. We can all support one another. And she has two weeks now to make a bunch of outfits. And I think Kristen should make something for Taylor. That way confirmed like we got a sleigh outfit. Yeah. And Kristen's like sort of signature look is these puffer jackets. Um, but it's in Vegas, so oh. she might have to do like a corset. She's also big known for corsets and miniskirts. Right, but she's only been doing the puffers because it's been freezing. Oh, that's true, actually. But, and but, that's like what she went viral for. Right, but she usually does like a corset or an oversized tee or a, a pant or a jacket. She could do anything. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what she wears, too. What everyone wears. Yeah. yeah. We kind of need a red carpet. No. And there are so many like events leading up to the Super Bowl, like parties for the, and especially because it's in Vegas, it's going to be like even bigger and better, big clubs. But there aren't like real red carpet moments at the Super Bowl, and there really needs to be. There needs to be like a full televised. We need E News. We need Tanya Rad and Justin like there. We need a red carpet, and then when the wags like walk into the stadium, they just walk that carpet. It doesn't have to be like this whole thing, but we just need a no. camera on them. And when the players walk, they get like the full Hollywood treatment. Yeah. We see all their outfits. It's like a big fashion show. Obviously, Travis is known for like his killer outfits. We need that for the women. We do. Like, fo- sorry, football's for everybody now. And we need, you know, equal pay. And it would be a red carpet, which is great because both teams are red. Oh, so who wears what color? Well, and they're both kind of like red and yellow. One team, like in the Super Bowl, someone is considered like the home team. Also, they did play each other in 2020, so we could just look back at those picks. Yeah, yeah. Rematch. No, there's a lot of history here. It's going to be an amazing Super Bowl. I cannot wait. Good luck to everyone. Go Niners. Bang, bang. Woohoo. Any other thoughts? No, I mean... Like so many, they're just pouring out of me. I'm sure they'll continue to pour out for the rest of the show, but. And the rest of the week, also the airlines with their 1989 flights and 80s flight 87 going from Kansas City to Las Vegas. Like just keep the door on the plane. Yeah, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Just keep the door on and we're good. I guess it's like a thing whenever they find out who's going to the Super Bowl, airlines will add flights from Smart. that makes town. Sense. This makes sense. And now they're like being kitschy and cute with their marketing. Like it's flight number 1989. Uh, keep the doors on and go get a drill and screw the bolts in and shut up. Just make it there safely, please. And thank you. Yeah. Why don't you bring the fans alive? That would be nice. <laughs> bring the fans alive. Why don't you deliver all, all the fans in a live... Every- why don't you bring all the fans in a lively manner? <laughs> all cell phones stay on the plane. Yeah. Like, why don't we just, what if you just did your job? Yeah, don't worry about the flight number. Don't worry about it. No, don't worry. Like, you'll have your moment. Ha ha, cute. Like, 1989. Like, ha ha. No, no, just no. Do, do th- we all have a role to play in the Super Bowl to come, and yours is just getting the fans there safely. Yours is just safety. Just, no, and travel, necessity. It's not about the numbers and the Taylor Swift. You have no part of the Taylor Swift fa- uh, fandom, I'm sorry. No, it's like, sit the fuck down and shut the fuck up. Like, get out. No one wants you. Just fly the plane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's just too much. It's really too much. And the Las Vegas stadium is, like, the sickest stadium um, and I'm sure Taylor will have like the best possible suite. I know they have like on-field suites. They have like these crazy like on-field suites. 
Yeah, I'm curious where she's going to sit. I wonder who she'll bring with her. This is like the cream of the crop. It, the season started and she was, I was actually noticing this because I was picking stories and Sophie was going to every game because like Sophie oh, was going yeah. through it. But now Sophie and her mans are very serious. She posted yes. on Instagram with him. They've been on she a did. ski trip and I feel like Sophie's kind of flown the coop. Yep. Unless Kara Green is going to the Super Bowl. So I agree. I think it'll be like the A team and I do think that includes Kelly. I do think Blake and Ryan will be there. Like they really started this journey with her. They, but they mostly stay in the games near their house oh that's true I don't think they'll be there maybe her LA friends but also Taylor's kind of become a part of like this Chiefs family she doesn't need a million no. life rafts no she doesn't so like she's got Brittany all of Travis's friends who like seem to be recurring characters because I start recognizing them recognizing them more and more and she keeps hugging them and stuff she doesn't need that many like friends babysitters. yeah but if I was her close friend I would want to go like it's a fun thing the oh, Super Bowl of course, of not course. even because of her but like Everyone wants to go to the Super Bowl. I, I read the cheapest ticket is going for like $9,000. Well, that's the other thing is that I do think even Taylor Swift, like you have to be prudent. Those suites are hard to come by. They've been purchased for a long time. She obviously can get a suite, but like I am sure everyone's family, Donna and everyone wants to go. You can't bring a million friends. Like I no. think Taylor's probably, and I'm sure Taylor's like footing the bill for the suite or maybe Travis's. I don't know because it's like his family too, but she can't bring 55 people because it's Donna, it's Jason, it's Kylie, it's Travis's friends. Like it's a lot of people. So Taylor could probably bring like two to three friends. Yeah, no, you're right. I don't think there like will be more than one. Even she has to be conservative. I don't think there will be more than one chief suite. Right, for Travis. So it's need to bring only. Right. No, I think there will be more than one Chiefs suite, but Travis and Patrick are definitely going to have one suite together. And so that includes Patrick's mom, brother, sister, kids. Like, it's a lot of people. Yeah. What's the brother's name? Jackson. <laughs> that was Justin because I'm so hung up on Austin Mahomes. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you think it's Austin. I need Patrick and Brittany to have a son named Austin just to just close, close the, the circle. Loop. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That would be that would be important to me. And I'm just like continuing my journey, loving Brittany Mahomes. Like it's just it's all good, you know. But her and Taylor were not together yesterday. Yes, they were. Oh, they were both in the suite. Yeah, got it. I didn't see. They arrived together. They left together. It was all good. Oh, Jackie's. She seized on it. It's true. Take your time. You sick? Yeah, I, over the last few days, I've just been like, had a tickle in my throat, and now today I'm sneezing, and I have no idea where it's come from. No one around me is sick. Mm. Spooky scary. I have chills. Just like, not ideal. Should we like continue on with the stories, even though it just feels so irrelevant? How long have we been going? 47 minutes. Oh my God. Okay, yeah. we'll we'll give you the other four, because like, that's a really crazy precedent to set. Like, what story has to be big enough that it's the only story? I, if there ever was a story, like, it would be that. But listen, we have a job to do, and we will do the other four. We will do the other four, but swiftly. Sw like Taylor for Swift. For lack of a better word. Yeah. We're going to be swift about it. OK. Um, anything else that you want to say before I get into the stories? No, I mean, like, we have four. Uh, we have time. Like <laughs> Not if we're going swiftly. Oh, OK. I guess then yeah. the Swiftly stories are brought to you by Taylor Farms. So Taylor Farms chopped salad kits deliver the freshest, best tasting salads to eat at home or on the go across North America. Taylor Farms is a family owned company on a mission to create healthy lives throughout fresh, delicious food. Taylor Farms chopped salad kits. They affy boring in every bag with over 30 flavors. Each base is a unique blend of greens and veggies created to perfectly complement the toppings and dressings to deliver the best tasting flavor for flavor forward salad kits. So they really are where convenience meet freshness. The salads are pre-washed, pre-cut, and ready to enjoy. Whether you're a busy professional or a home chef, Taylor Farms salads make healthy eating a breeze. Like salad bags are so fabulous, but let me tell you, some of these brands are out here with like crusty, dusty, musty salad bags. Taylor Farms is so fresh. They have such great different like flavors and uh -huh. kits. And it's really so genius to always have in your fridge. Like whether you're busy or you're just like hungry, it's just a great thing to have. They're so amazing. I feel like I always want like a big juice salad but I don't have the time or chopping prowess to get chopping or the creativity and they it's done it's done with Taylor Farms so with my new sh with my new like healthy chef kitchen vibe these easy salad kits are the perfect healthy and flavorful addition um whether you want to have it as a meal or just you know a little side maybe make some rice some chicken whatever it is so purchase Taylor Farms chopped salad kits where you like to shop it's available at all major grocery stores and next time you're going for salad in a bag like the only real option here is Taylor Farms I'm sorry like it's fresh it's good it's really innovative with their flavors and their different kits and I love it kits 
today's episode is also brought to you by Caraway. As you're starting the new year, do you have any goals that Caraway can help you with? Because one of my goals is to stop ordering in so much, and Caraway has just been absolutely instrumental in that goal. For a lot of people, they want to stop ordering in to save money. They want to stop ordering in to be a little bit more health forward. Whatever it is, Caraway can help you. With so many collections to explore, there's sure to be a Caraway for every kind of cook. Their internet famous kitchenware is a staple of any home, and it comes in a variety of modern shades to fit with any design aesthetic. You can ditch the chemicals with Caraway. Their non toxic cookware features a chemical free ceramic coating, so food can be prepared with peace of mind that no hard to pronounce chemicals will leach into your healthy ingredients. All of their sets come equipped with complimentary easy access storage solutions to keep the kitchen tidy. Their colors are so gorgine. I just got the new sage set. I couldn't be happier with it. I'm going for like a new green undertone vibe, very olive in my new home. I've got like green furniture. I've got some green rugs and having the green cookware really ties the whole thing in together. And of course, it's just like it's the best pan. Easy ceramic coating. Nothing sticks. Easy to clean. Five star. You know, don't make me insult your intelligence by like bragging. It's non-toxic, it's easy cooking, and it's well-loved. Over 65,000 people have rated five stars about their Caraway kitchen, so now it's time to try for yourself. Visit carawayhome.com slash toasty to take advantage of this limited time offer of 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive for our listeners, so visit carawayhome.com slash toasty or use code toasty, T-O-A-S-T-Y, at checkout, Caraway. It's non-toxic, cook- non-toxic cookware made modern. Thank you. Oh, that made me hungry. Our next story, like really the next four, just I feel, I honestly feel sorry for them. I do too. Um, Kim Kardashian is set to produce and feature in an upcoming three-part BBC documentary about Elizabeth Taylor. Oh my God, who cares? Yeah. Kim is gearing up to produce and feature in BBC's upcoming three-part documentary covering the life of Elizabeth Taylor. Kim was actually the last person to interview the late movie star before her death in March what? 2011. And what? 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 You know, Kim's obsessed with her. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. She's like bought some of her jewelry that's gone to auction. I think like Kim buys everything, like, you know? Yeah, but like this is like someone who is just, you know, like her Kim. Okay. So she's going to produce the documentary and also feature in it, which I wonder in what sense, maybe talking about their final interview. Yeah, I mean, this is just like another like part in Kim's journey to wanting to be some sort of like, Hollywood uh, mover and shaker. Well, yes, but this is a documentary and I do understand. It's just like another notch in her belt though, like for production. Like she's a producer now. Yeah. Uh, But no, this makes like more sense to me than, you know, her starring in a Netflix series. Right, like a rom-com. But it'll be interesting. I wonder what their last interview was. Yeah. The story is not storying for me. Yeah. Well, having a hard time like grounding up like a fuck to give, you know? Yeah. Well, there are people like Elizabeth Taylor. She's a lot of people's like Marilyn Monroe, Audrey Hepburn. Like she's, no, she's everything. She's an icon. I love so her Jewish You queen. might want to know that she has a documentary coming out. You know what? I That's probably a documentary I would watch. I don't know a lot about Elizabeth Taylor, but I know she's like a Jewish ally queen. And she's and, like uh, Evelyn Hugo. Right, 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 right. So like I would watch this. Yeah. Me too. She's someone that I don't know a lot about that, like, I would want to get into her story. This seems Rabbit like a hole. good portal. And then you would end up, like, reading a book written by, like, a uh, hairdresser or something. Love. Can't yeah. wait. Yeah. Love that for me. Yeah. That journey is coming up for you. Are you ready for our next story? Yes. Our next story is for the co-sleeping mamas because Adrian Bylone is talking about how she turned her son's room into a playroom since they co-sleep. She said... Oh, wow. Okay. By the way... I don't know if we ever talked about this on the main show because you said it on the Patreon. Yeah. And I'm not co-sleeping anymore, but for the first four months of Charlie's life, we were co-sleeping exclusively. And Jackie just said, like, fuck it. Like, fuck um, it. And the I'm thing the- is, I think a lot of people co-sleep. It gets like a really like in bad. Secret. It, in secret. There was literally a cut article called, are we all co-sleeping and just <laughs> lying about it? Because it's like not textbook safe sleep it it can be dangerous but a lot of what I read is that most co-sleeping accidents happen when you fall asleep accidentally and you're not prepared like when you go to sleep intentionally knowing you're going to co-sleep there's a lot of things that you could do to make it safer when there have been co-sleeping accidents it's from people who didn't plan to fall asleep got it so that's just something to know but anyways yeah a lot of people fucking co-sleep and it's great okay but accidents happen. And you guys, when accidents Jackie... happen, you have to be safe about it. You know, don't use a blanket. So you have to be sleeping in a safe position. Like you need to do a little bit of research on 
what's best but it's also so innate like the idea that you have to do research for this like natural instinct but just right. be safe about it if you're curious okay anyways adrian by loan her son is 17 months and he's still sleeping in bed with her so That's much funny. so that she turned his what was supposed to be his bedroom into a playroom she was on the tamarind hall show and she said the reality is we co-sleep so we don't call it his bedroom anymore that bed is there for when my cousins come over and they got kids they sleep in that room that's that boy is so in that funny. bed with me i'm not letting him go i just want to say like i before i go to bed tonight like will pray for adrian balon's like dms yeah because people are so nuts about this topic like it's a personal choice however anyone chooses to parent like is there journey and people get so I literally people were when Jackie said she was co-sleeping on the Patreon people were like I'm canceling my Patreon like okay yeah co-sleeping is pretty controversial but like it's like anything else more personal than some babies go to sleep in the crib and sleep great from of day course. one and if that's not re your reality like trying to you gotta force get creative it, you, and you need to sleep like I feel like the first three months of Charlie's life the only reason why I was functioning was because I was getting decent sleep because we were sleeping together Right, like what's more dangerous, co-sleeping or having a mother who's not awake? Yeah, no, it's just, and every baby's different. Some babies just don't want to go into the crib yet. But now, right. but you could also, you don't have to co-sleep till they're 17 months. But she talks about how her journey to having her baby was a very long road. They did IVF. I think she had a surrogate. And so she mm. said, I'm not letting him go. He's sleeping with me. That's Listen, that on that. But I think when your baby gets bigger, the bigger they get, uh, well, it becomes more less dangerous. dangerous. Less danger of you rolling onto them, more danger of them rolling themselves off the bed oh oh, oh. but you could put up things like there are things that you could yeah. do yeah, yeah yeah yeah. but yeah when you're maybe 17 months like it's kind of just like having a kid in your bed yeah no it's like annoying no it's like they're a person they can sleep it's not like as dangerous as sleeping with like a newborn like i one time in my life i have been so blessed to have harry fall asleep in my bed like i don't know what happened it must have just been like a crazy day or something we he was allowed to come into bed with me and watch a movie and maybe it was boring because he fell asleep. And let me tell you, I've thought of nothing else but that moment since. Like, it was the most magical thing that's ever happened to me. I felt special. I felt chosen. And if I could do that every night, like, fuck it. Yeah, I'm doing it. Yeah. No, it's it's really, really nice. Again, not for everyone. But for the this is stories for those of you who do it. Because for everyone else, you know, your pediatrician tells you AAP, you're doing great, sleeping on the back, whatever. For the people who it's not so simple and you're co-sleeping, like, I see you. Now, when you go to the pediatrician, like, do you admit it or you lie? Well, that's that's like in the culture. And I found like some co-sleepy Instagram accounts where like people talk about these things. And it's like everyone we dread going because it's do like. You, but did you lie? I don't lie. OK. Because I'm not a liar. And what did the doctor say? Like, oh, you're not even for like uh, accident purposes, but she was just like more so you want to get him out and into his own room or else you'll never be able to and I'm someone who I want that eventually independence like I'm not gonna have the them sleeping in my bed forever like some people who want that but she was more so like if you want him to eventually sleep in a crib outside of your room like now you want him now's the time th at three months and I'm like okay maybe five months <laughs> right 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 oh that's funny okay yeah but when I felt like he was more ready and also able to put himself to sleep you know whatever works whatever, whatever works. yeah whatever works but her advice wasn't wrong in the sense that like if you want it to happen eventually like you can't go on forever like this of course of course but less about the like that's bad don't do it right yeah because like I know I see uh, of course you know the AAP always with their guidelines that change every day and then they're like oh the last one don't listen to that one this one's the real one this is yeah for like Demi Lovato oh that's the AAP they're like remember when yeah. we said that thing don't listen to us it's this no now. Demi Lovato's like my last documentary I was lying the whole time this documentary <laughs> is my real truth classic like, stuff oh, okay. it's like there happened like three documentaries in a row classic stuff that's how I feel about a lot of baby guidelines that have changed so every 10 years they change and it's the opposite of what they said 10 years ago so just so like, I'm do like, what you think is best right so I'm like so what are you going to say 10 years from now hmm. right what about right. what you're saying now isn't correct no so that's why it's just like do what you think is best go with your gut maternal instinct is real Fuck maternal AAP. instinct is real even though there was an article that said maternal instinct is not real who wrote that article slanderous it was like New York Times E who wrote the article? Let me call them by their name. I just don't believe that, like, at all. No, I don't believe that at all. But they say it's like a social construct, which is... Oh, that's such a lie. It's such a lie. Instinct is not real. 
I'm going to go with Washington Post. The New York Times claims that maternal instinct is a misogynistic myth. Wait, why is it misogynistic? It literally gives women magical powers. Literally. But I guess I don't even want to theorize as to no, the other side I, of I don't want to... I don't want to platform this dumb idea. I don't want to platform any rationalizations that would make people think that maternal instinct is not a real thing. It's real. It's It's real. real. Are you ready for our next story? Yes. Some Nielsen news. Because Suits has beat The Office in the streaming record for 2023, Nielsen reveals their original streaming shows shut out of yearly top 10. It's all rewatches. And that wow. Suits has beat The Office, which is like, that's really big. Okay, but just for this one year, not like in total streams. Oh, of course not. But for oh, this okay. year. Okay, that's what I thought you were saying at first. But that is crazy. Yeah. So, oh, I hate when they rack up minutes watched. Like, But also, is The Office bigger than Friends? Yeah. So I need to go um, to the list of the top 10. I, but they didn't say The Office was number one, but just that Suits beat The Office. So That's insane. Yeah. I wonder if any of the actors, because most of the actors from that show like aren't like popular working actors right now. It was like that show is kind of like their big Roman empire. And I wonder if it's caused any of them to like book more roles. I feel like it would. Because they all do like indie stuff. Like, But are any of them going to be in something we've actually like going to say? It would be nice. Yeah. And what they really should do is bring Suits back on Netflix, like Arrested Development vibes, but make it good. That's actually a great idea, but Meghan Markle wouldn't return. You never know. Actually, if there was ever anything she was going to return to, like these are people she knows she's really close with. Like, No, she wouldn't have returned three years ago. She wouldn't have returned no. two years ago. Maybe no. in a year from now. Yeah. You know, things are winding down over at Archwell Archetypes. Yeah, productions. They're looking for new content. Maybe archety- Maybe she would insist on being a producer on the show. Right, right, right. Get in like a backdoor deal. Make it all look like it was her idea. Love. Wait, what was the story? Oh, that it beat The Office in <sighs> streaming records. Right. And um, it racked up 57.7 billion total minutes watched. Whatever that means. Office was 57.1 billion total minutes watched. Now, I guess, like, if I had to guess prior to this story, like, what's the biggest show of all time, like, currently, like, that people still watch? Like, I guess I would say The Office, but I don't know why I find that shocking. Just because we don't watch it. Right, right. But, like, I would have thrown, like, Seinfeld, Friends in there. Like, they're all very much of the same ilk. on the streamers? It's on Netflix. I feel like people And Friends is on Max. People don't, I feel like, people don't rewatch Seinfeld in the way like that- Like as a re- comfort show. In the way that they rewatch Friends. I'm sure some people do, but not like hordes the way Friends or The Office. Yeah, because not even, it's not even rewatching. People just have Friends and The Office on as like background noise for them these days. It's like a comfort show. It's just like sound. It's not even a rewatch. Yeah. I'm also, trying to find the newest- list of top 10. The way they're making this so difficult to decipher. New and final season of Young Sheldon premieres like this month. Sad. No, and I think I know what happens. What? Because it's a show that's a prequel. So like, yeah. apparently there's like this big thing that happens in Big Sheldon's life. And people are assuming that like that is what happens now. I'm sure that would. And now that I know what it is, like I'm, I really don't want to watch. I didn't finish the seasons that are out there but it's like it's always there for you it's always there for me but I was like I wasn't comfortable when I was watching it and so like I have that association with it like I was so massive on this uncomfortable couch right like deep into my pre- like it was just I need to you have a bad association it's okay I need to add, get good associations though because I, I liked the show but I just like maybe all of like a sudden I- one day I was like I can't do this anymore Maybe when I come down, like, we'll all watch it together and have a giggle, and, like, that'll be your new association. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, love that. I had to call a lid on Young Sheldon, no cap. No cap. She, you had to put a cap on it. I did. Fifth and final story. Yes. 118 new emojis are arriving to your iOS oh 17.4, including a lime, a shaking head, and four gender-neutral families. So... We also have a phoenix rising, a brown mushroom, a broken metal chain, two shaking heads, four gender neutral families, and there's also 100 people facing sideways in a range of skin colors and genders, including some holding canes and others in wheelchairs. 
I just feel like it's going to get really hard to find the emoji that you need. Like when they're doing brown mushrooms. Like you, there, there really doesn't need to be emoji for everything. No, but it's so crazy that you can have all these emojis and still not be able to have redhead Include variant. everyone. Oh, oh, they don't still? No, like I couldn't do a pregnant redhead. Oh, that's crazy. But I could do a no, pregnant the, man. The thing is, is like you... <laughs> The thing is, is like, I do think it's futile for Apple to try and really include every single person. No, they're trying. They will and not they're gonna give And they're going to die up. trying. They're because die at the trying. end of the day, like, everyone is different. Like, no, and everyone people keep in this changing. World. And also, it's right. like, if we do red hair variant, then, like, do we do blue hair? Well, but red hair is and natural. Nobody's red, born no, with blue that, hair. I agree, but maybe that's the argument they would make. But that argument doesn't even work for the ios operators because they're like yeah then we'll do it i don't give a fuck we'll add it yeah no no no. the thing is is like i just i do feel like it's a, a fruitless endeavor they're on because every year they add more things but every year people in the culture look different and act different and identify differently they'll never like, stop trying no jackie it's it's it literally is like the song that never ends like it's a hamster wheel they will never complete what they've set out to complete but I think they're okay with that. And I would be okay with it too if they would just fucking add the redhead variant. And people will say, there's a redhead emoji and they send me the one. I'm not asking for a redhead emoji. I'm asking for every single emoji of person to have right. the redhead variant. Right, because they do. For every person, you can select blonde, blonde, brunette. Skin color. And change skin tone. But you're right, there is no redhead. Redhead variant is what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. So until you guys add that, you're never going to be inclusive and you're never going to accomplish your dreams of inclusivity. You know that, Yeah, that's right? like odd though because they, they go to like the most sort of extreme and random They're like, oh, if there's one person in society who's like this, then they should right. be included. Right, but there's, you know, a whole culture of redheads. And it's generation. a natural thing. Right. It's not like then going into hair dyes, which would be a whole box to right, open right, right. up. A right, box literal dye. box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe they can, you know, cross that bridge when they decide. I just personally, like, I feel exhausted for these people. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's like, it's never enough. But I also feel like there's so many emojis that I go to use and they don't exist. Yes, yes, yes. Because I remember, I, and I think maybe they've added it, but I was shocked to find there was no bubble emoji. Bubbles? Like blowing yeah, bubbles? I think, I think there is now. There is now. But you're right. It's always like these random things. Remember when they changed like the gun to water gun? Like that helped. <laughs> We're on peace. You know? Like I feel like they're always like doing the most, like trying to keep up with every movement. And I, I just want to say like, I feel tired for them. Like it must be exhausting that department of Apple. Yeah, I'm tired for them. But I also personally, like I have beef with them. You have a vested interest. Yeah, no, I have beef. Like I'm angry. Shannon was just saying, cause she came to New York. She's was talking about she's doing a trip to New York to do like a bunch of bridal stuff and she wanted to put like a redhead bride and there wasn't. No redhead bride. Yeah. Excuse me. It ain't right. I'm like, what is that? No, it's almost like Steve Jobs like was seriously like betrayed by a woman with red hair. It's like the company has a policy. hundred percent. Except it's like not Apple. It's um this company that does the emojis. Unicode. Okay, well, Unicode. So the, the CEO of Unicode's wife left him for a redhead. Yeah. And he's never been the same since. And he will like, not acknowledge redheads. I guess that's better than doing like a busted redhead. Yeah. I mean, none of the emojis are like particularly gorgeous, you know? No, but they, they are nice. I'm also like not an emoji user. Like I can't explain it. I kind of hate emojis, low key. Sometimes I, I like the emoticon, the yellow circles. The expressive faces. The OG. Like, but no, and even some of the newer ones, like uh, the one that's smiling and crying. I'm yes, always no, no, no. I, I'm that. saying OG in the sense of like the yellow circles. Yellow circles, but even the updated yellow circles and they they have like cringe emoji, have salute. I love them all. I agree with that. Those ones I use, actually, let me go to my most used emojis. What do you got? Mine are like the ones we use for toast, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, what else? Oh, I use hearts of every color. Oh, I love this one. I love this. I think it's Hand just, hearts. I think hand hearts is a beautiful emoji. I do the vomiting one like all the time. I don't know why. Oh, that's good. I have crying with a smile, but I also have teary eyes with a smile. I also have the two fingers like pointing at each other. Oh, that's good. I don't have that. I have, oh, 
The one that's like blushing and surrounded by three hearts. Love that one. You love that. You love that. I love the one that's like screaming in pain. I'm going to text it to you. That's like. <laughs> okay, hold on. I texted it to you. I use that all the time. Oh, ja- the one she's talking about <laughs> is the one where like the mouth is turned kind of upside down. It's like. Uh. You know? And you know, I love the one that's like. Like yikes. Yeah. The yikes. Yeah, emoji. That's the cringe one. I'm going to screenshot this and post it to my Instagram. But why do Share I have a your sneaker? favorite emojis. I have a you rocket because I accidentally did to the moon. Yeah, because you're always talking about Elon. Classic. Oh, the headphones for listen. Tap to listen. Oh, I always have the microphone and the camera. Tap to listen. Tap to watch. Oh, I use my headphones. That's funny. Um. So yes, best of luck in this fruitless endeavor, <laughs> Apple. We wish you all the best. And that is our show. Really, you know, the one big story, the four littles. But I had a good time. I had a good time with the four littles. I feel like we got actually into some interesting combo. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to doing it all again tomorrow. Same, except, you know, with less less exciting things in which to discuss. I don't know. Who knows? The day is young. That's true. And New Heights will come out this week. Right. So that's our show, you guys. Thank you so much for listening to the Toast of the Millennium Morning Show where we deliver the fast side stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So for watching us on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as podcasts anywhere. Podcasts can be found on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, IR Radio, Castbox, all the places where you listen to podcasts. Find us at Toast of the Millennium Morning Show. Find us at Toast of the Millennium Morning Show. Find us at Toast of the